I've recently been studying a 2013 controversy about some papers that could be characterized as statin hesitant that were published in a British medical journal. Today I'm going to review an editorial related to that controversy. Stay tuned. So here's some background. In 2013, the British Medical Journal published two articles, one by John Abramson and a few other authors, and one by Asim Mohatra. The one by Abramson was titled, Should People at Low Risk of Cardiovascular Disease Take a Statin? And the one by Mohatra was, Saturated Fat is Not the Major Issue. At least one prominent pro-statin proponent, Dr. Rory Collins, objected. Another journal known as The Lancet, which is more pro-statin than the British Medical Journal or BMJ, they got involved and there were calls for papers to be retracted, which was not done, by the way, though some corrections were issued. So far, I've not been able to obtain the full text of the original papers. It would cost me 187 pounds for that privilege and for 11-year-old short papers, I'm not going to pay that. Today's video is not a full review of the controversy. I have over 100 pages of documentation related to this incident, and it would be easy for me to cherry pick and paint one side or the other as the bad guys. So I want to go over the information carefully before reporting what I find, starting with the assumption that all parties acted in good faith unless I find evidence to the contrary. But while I was gathering this material, I found an editorial by a Dr. Richard Lehman, which I thought interesting enough to review, and that's what this video is about. It'll be several weeks before I put out a video on the full controversy. So who is Professor Richard Lehman? He's a professor at the University of Birmingham, Institute of Applied Health Research, and an honorary professor of the Shared Understanding of Medicine, and according to Wikipedia, he's a primary care physician also, so he's a practicing physician, or was, I don't know if he's retired now or not. He did a weekly review of medical journals, which appeared in the BMJ, or at least on their website, until he apparently retired from that maybe a few years ago. The latest editorial I saw of his was dated 2020, so he's not doing them anymore. But let's take a look at what he had to say having to do with this. So his article was titled, Where Next with Statins? So let's look at some of his thoughts, some indirectly related to the controversy. It's a three-page article. It's well worth reading. A link is provided in the description. Today, I'm just going to go over some salient points. Here we see that he takes a rather mainstream position of statins, that there are overall benefits. I don't know a specific position on primary prevention, though I'm not sure he would be in the statin hesitant camp if such a formal camp existed. Where he disagrees with the Lance, it seems to be in the matter of adverse effects and patient decisions. Like he says here, the discussion of adverse effects in this Lancet article that he's referring to uh, doesn't match clinical experience. He has five numbered paragraphs, and in paragraph number two, he takes the position that statin adverse effects are mild and reversible. Well, maybe if they're recognized early and the patients get off the statins quickly enough, but let's go on. So here we see him acknowledge what we all know, the frequency, regardless of positions on the severity of them, are far more prevalent than what is reported in the clinical trials. And we should be asking why, rather than suggesting that they're due entirely to public misinformation, which was apparently what maybe the Lancet implied in their article. In paragraph five, he really gets to the heart of the matter. And, and this is probably the greatest statement about statin adverse effects that I've ever seen. I wish I had said it. The main adverse effect of statins is in to induce arrogance in their proponents. This makes me believe that he doesn't consider himself particularly pro-statin. So he goes on, seems to be throwing a little shade on the Lancet here. He calls them out twice, first for advocating authoritative persuasion and then pointing out that the numbers needed to treat, the NNTs they want to use for this authoritative persuasion just aren't very persuasive. Longtime viewers of this channel should find this argument familiar. I am a little concerned about this highlighted statement at the bottom where he says nobody has devised the ideal decision tool, partly because we are only just beginning to take into account of how human beings actually react to different kinds of risk framing. And is he implying that, that ways should be devised for framing the risk discussion to overcome objections from people with different viewpoints? I'm probably reading too much into it, but I get a little paranoid with dealing with questions about statins. When we see his final paragraph, we'll see that that's probably not what he's getting at but who knows. So here's his closing paragraph in full. There's some key phrases here where he starts out saying nobody can make an informed guess about how many people would or would not take statins, especially for primary prevention, if they were fully informed about potential benefits and harms and allowed 
keyword there was allowed to make the decision themselves. Uh, I'm not familiar with how things work in the UK, but I hope patients are allowed to make the decisions themselves. Though so really, if it's like it is in the US and doctors often browbeat their patients into taking statins, I think choice is a bit of an illusion. There should be no external pressure from doctors. Provide us with the information honestly, that's it's key if it can be done, and let us decide. Next, he's critical of relying on authority and the gaslighting that many of us have experienced. That gaslighting is not his term, it's my turn. He talks about the alternative to going through a thorough interview with each patient is just for the lesser breeds of doctors, as he puts it here, to heed the command of experts. There's that argument from authority and simply tell all these people what to do based on 10 minute appointments that were probably set up for other reasons. And then if people experience side effects, they should be firmly told that the trials show they cannot be due to statins, as if that should matter to a suffering patient. He concludes by saying, taking lifetime preventive medication is an individual choice, acknowledging that the true work of shared decision-making has scarcely begun, and I'd have to agree with that. So for my closing thoughts, I don't totally agree with Dr. Lehman on all matters. For example, elsewhere in his editorial, I think he downplays the impact of type two diabetes a little too much. But this article is six years old and its positions may be updated since then. Oftentimes I really do worry that my opinions go against those of the experts and I'm certainly not one of them. I have no medical training. It's just good to occasionally come across expert opinion that is consistent with much of what I've been saying on this channel. And these three are the main points that I think his editorial agrees with me. Taking a statin is an individual decision that we should be able to make without undue pressure. Secondly, numbers needed to treat NNTs, especially for primary prevention in individuals are particularly unimpressive. And doctors and researchers really need to stop viewing populations and look at patients as individuals. Finally, adverse effects are real and prevalent and no patient should be made to feel that they're imagining them. Mainstream medicine is emphasizing overcoming patients' experiences and objections instead of asking themselves why the disconnect between the mainstream thought and those patients' experiences and decisions. So that's what I have on this topic. If you appreciate this content, please like, share, subscribe, and comment on this or other topics you'd like me to cover. And if you haven't seen this video, I recommend you take a look at it now. Thanks for listening.